MC and happy birthday to my YouTube channel or oh, an anniversary for me to the channel 15 years ago today as I upload this video I started my channel for the celebration oh, I suppose I should make a wish so what I thought I'd do, I hope the audio is alright because I'm in a room, I don't have an external mic or anything, I'm just chilling with you guys, is to highlight the 15 most important videos to the channel throughout my 15 years of doing this. Love with Jeff, okay. And don't forget, my car show, Adam Seafest Tickets, can be found in the link below. So each of these videos, I'm going to give you some background information and general knowledge about what happened, why it happened, and where it happened. Let's get started with my first ever video on YouTube. I uploaded this on the day that I started my channel. Need headphones for this. So, what I'm about to get in my ears is one of the most awful sounds in the world because this video was filmed on a little compact digital camera that I think I've got somewhere. And the microphone really could not cope with the 8 litre W16 engine or the Bugatti Veyron. This was actually filmed in 2007, so I had this in my kind of backlog of content. And the whole idea when I started the YouTube channel was not to make it big time, it was just to put my videos somewhere online for people to watch. So this was the first video I uploaded from Goodwood Festival of Speed of just a Bugatti Veyron. Um, and if you click play, yeah, it's, it's, it's not the nicest sounding thing in the world. There's the engine, some crowds. Um, it's probably one of my poorest videos, but certainly not my poorest. And there's the front of it and it's finished. Um, so what was that, 12 seconds? 12 seconds long was my first ever video on YouTube. That has reached 9.3 thousand views. All of these videos are still on YouTube. I'm actually using the YouTube player to watch them myself, so you can go watch them for yourself. They're all linked in the video's description as well. Now the next video is quite a jump. You joined me in 2012. My channel is still just a dump for general videos, and at that age I was kind of get the next viral hit. I was trying everything that I could, not just car videos. The channel name was Adam C 3046 that Bebo gave me as a username so I used it everywhere. It was mostly car videos because that's what I mostly love. And there was one day I was sitting at home and uh, I think mum must have come in saying there's a fox outside which was a bit unusual being daytime so we went outside to have a look at this fox. I grabbed my video camera as I always would and it was out of battery and you can actually hear me in the video saying oh low battery. Oh, no battery. But my mum also filmed it as well on her little compact digital camera. And my brother brought my dog out, he was carrying my dog, and as you play you can see there's the fox in the front garden just checking out the sights. And in a minute Buster, the neighbourhood cat, runs into view. There he is, there's Buster. And then the fox suddenly sees Buster and runs after him. But then my dog starts barking. <coughs> And then the piece de resistance of the video is the red eyes in the fox. That's just from the camera. That's why you have like double flashes to stop red eye from happening. That's as a result of the camera and the eye retina bouncing off each other. I don't know the exact science behind it. And this video was my first ever proper viral video. I think I had a, one or two that had got to a million. And at this point, I hadn't started monetizing my YouTube videos. However, in the August of that year, I did. And then at the end of that August, I went away on holiday. During my time on holiday, the video went viral. I remember being on holiday and saying to mum like, uh, something's happened and the video was on like 200,000 views after like a, a day of random growth. What had happened is Gangnam Style started going viral and then the next recommended video was Hippo Butt Explosion Diarrhea or something like that and that started going viral and then mine was like the most recommended video for the Hippo Butt Explosion and now it's on 26.7 million views. It is my most viewed video even to this day and from that point onwards I started paying more attention to the videos especially car videos and in August of 2012 was my first ever time car spotting in London and then from about the winter of 2012 I did it a bit more regularly and then in 2013 I met the guys at Cream Developments and up to that point I only filmed supercar content. When I met the guys at Queen Developments, I started filming their cars, their Nissan Skyline GTR R33 and the whole Piccadilly Boy Racer scene and realised that you guys loved modified car content. So, 
from that point onwards, I started filming more modified cars, and this video was what also started kicking off my channel and gaining me some modified audience. So here I am inside a BMW E30, Calypso Red, Cabriolet, as they do their cruise through London. This is us making our entrance into Trafalgar Square. This is basically a compilation video of videos that I filmed from the summer of this particular GTR, which is the cream development one that is particularly famous, or flamous, no. And here we are, a little bit further north, shooting some flames at the side of the road, which back then was like, oh my god, this is amazing. Uh, and that is why it now has 1.4 million views. I have other videos of this car that got more views, but this one is what kind of took off first. <laughs> But throughout my time, especially during those years, I would frequent car shows as well as car spotting. I wouldn't speak in the videos though, these were not vlogs. These were just videos that I captured, much like Shmi 150, Supercars of London. I would spend a lot of time with those guys filming cars and filming videos. And what I do then is make small compilations of certain cars. So the next video is a SV bodied LP640. So it's a Murcielago LP640 with a Lamborghini Murcielago Super Voce body kit on it. So it wasn't a genuine SV, but I filmed it at various shows. So here we are, uh, Wilson House, uh, of it coming towards me. So I filmed it at Wilson House. You've also got it at Carfest. Here we go, zooming up the road. Sounds good. And this video caught the attention of the driver. So down the side, it has a sticker for Universal Classic Cars. And the owner of that company, which is a storage company, saw this video, he found it, it's only got 2.8 thousand views. And we got chatting. So I then went down to Universal Classic Cars, made a video, and ultimately, once I'd finished university, he offered me a job. And I had four years of my YouTube career, of my life, working at Universal Classic Cars as a result of this video. Um, and then in, in um, 2020, something happened in the world that made everyone lose their jobs, and that was, that was me as well. So a two minute video with only a couple of thousand views got me a job. But I would still keep filming content throughout 2013, 2014, and in 2014 was my first time ever going abroad to film content in another country. And when I was there, I decided I would film not a conventional vlog, but just kind of an overview of our trip. And this, in 2014, was our trip to Top Marks in Monaco in the springtime of 2014. And as you can see, it starts off with some really bad typography, and then... We are in a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first entry into vlogging. Now I don't think, well I might have done, I might have spoken in the background or something, but I don't think I've filmed myself talking until that point. So that was almost my vlogging debut and this video was fantastic. We just had a laugh, there was nothing serious about it and there was no like storytelling or anything, it was just random clips. I tried to pitch a story together like day one, day two, day three and it was almost like a highlight reel of the trip in general, the bit of like banter in between creating my first vlog. So here I am in the Mansory Bugatti Veyron. one. Ah, and this was the Mansory Suicusa for i458 Spider shooting away. And then the next clip, here I am inside it. So I got to ride in all these supercars. I was still more into supercars, but this was like a modified supercar show. But we move on to September of that same year where I bought my first ever car. And this video was the first of a more traditional type of vlog, but I still was not comfortable as you can see. I just bought a car. Um, and I've parked it right here. Right yeah. along here. Ah uh, yes, yeah, so this the idea with this is yeah, down. it's not this car, it could be this car, and this is not my car. It's, it could be this one, and it's a little bit further down. Making you think that I might have bought a Lancia Delta Integrale or maybe a 458 Speciale, but truthfully, this is what I bought, a 1972 MGB GT, mostly from the revenue of Dog Saves Cat from Fox. And it was kind of a revolutionary moment. I'd finally bought a car. Obviously, I've since restored this car, which was a financial mistake. 
But once I got that car, it gave me the freedom to go to more and more car shows, and I didn't have to borrow my mum's Peugeot to do so, or cycle, so I could venture out to Goodwood and Silverstone and London and other exciting locations and meet more people who were also into cars. And in September of 2015, myself and a few of the guys that I met, VTSV and DDM Historics, would do a road trip of our own in our classic cars. We had DDM Historics in his Alfa Romeo GT Junior, and then VTSV in his HPC Cache, which wasn't quite a classic but it counted. So I made this video a 32 minute special and it was my first proper movie like video. I am introducing the video like this. I was a master of video making at the time. Three classics, one lap. Ah yes, so three classics, one lap was not meant to be a catchphrase and it wasn't, but it was never going to be called three classics but it turned into this kind of three classic series of only two videos. We did another one the next year with uh, GT6 Ollie as well and then we said we'd be back and we never really did. And now I believe the Grand Tour have stolen my idea of the second video which is finding like funny place names and doing a driving tour around that. Apparently that's what they're gonna do next so you're welcome the Grand Tour. This video was full of excitement and visiting places and I ended up actually driving the wrong way. So instead of doing a lap of the Isle of Wight we just drove straight down and then did half of a lap and then at the end we ended up at a karting circuit which I won. Oh my god, I won! And then we were late for the ferry, so we did some exciting driving to a music and then missed it by a minute. It was all very dramatic and quite a fun conclusion to the video, even though we failed, but we just caught the next boat. So that was 2015. In 2016, I then bought a TVR 350i, and then in 2017, I part exchanged my TVR for my ultimate dream car that I have dreamt about owning for the whole of my life. This was the video that everything for me led up to finally allowing myself to buy the dream car so we had a bit of a montage as i went into london in my work colleagues a45 amg got the tube in had some pink floyds and books and car stuff and here we are with Hi, my Adam tvr and welcome once again to my tvr so i kept this secret from pretty much everyone like i don't think any friend other than maybe ollie knew about it because ollie came round once and saw the car there in the driveway and he was like Ooh! So it was a big surprise for everyone, but most people knew I wanted one, but I part exchanged the TVR, so I'm like, here it is. That was pretty much my final time looking at the car. But the big reveal that the video all led to is this, some lights turning on, and boom, there it is. My blue and white striped Cobra. I wanted blue and white stripes, I wanted cream interior, I wanted a Dax or an AK, and I wanted at least a Chevy or a Ford unit. I had to settle for a Chevy 350. 5.7 litres, 350 horsepower, 350 foot-pounds of torque, and then, oh yeah, starting up. The first time ever driving my Cobra was from Essex to the other side of London, around the M25, at night time, with a dodgy microphone with the lead that you can see there. Oh yeah, skip forward and there's a bit of a tunnel run, but even the, the audio wasn't great. I thought I'd have an external mic and try and make it professional, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't amazing. So that was a huge turning point in my YouTube career. I'd finally got the dream car. It could fit into supercar events so I could turn up to those. And this next video was another huge turning point in the YouTube career because from this point onwards, I would only film vlog videos, apart from like end of year compilations, best of supercar sounds, best of Skyline sounds and all that kind of jazz. But if ever I went to a car meet, I would film myself and introduce a video as well. Another personality who I met in the car scene was a chap called Anthony and his advice to me was to do exactly that, to film every single video because I didn't introduce and conclude my cars leaving videos, I just had them start and finish. This was at the Phoenix Inn in Hartley Whitney, I actually went there this year. Hi I'm Adam C and Happy New Year and welcome to some mayhem behind me. And I was used to vlogging, I'd done a few vlogs but from here onwards I started focusing more and more on what I did so I tried to input a bit of humour in it as well because I never wanted to be serious, I've always tried to be a bit more tongue in cheek about the videos. So tempting. <laughs> It doesn't work. Because life is boring if taken too seriously. Here I am at Donington Motor Circuit. This was a weekend of two very similar events, a Japanese event and then tracks, which is just for general modified cars, the day after. And myself and a friend, we commuted up to Donington, which is about two to three hours, and then back down home, and then back up the next day. And it was a fantastic weekend because I filmed vlogs at the show, and I filmed cars leaving. And 
these were three parts of cars leaving videos on each day so I think I got like six videos of cars leaving from just that weekend it was fantastic and that's why I put it in because it was just a highlight of that year in particular and a good demonstration of what I do filming cars leaving so you can see you got all kinds of cars this one is the Japanese show so it's mostly a lot of that I think it's one of my most entertaining cars leaving videos on YouTube. It's got 873,000 views and it was just part one of day one of that incredible weekend that I must do again. Now video number 11 actually goes backwards to 2017 when I had my aforementioned TVR 350i wedge. This video I made in 2020 when no one was very busy especially myself being a recently unemployed gentleman. So I made this hour long movie of my 2017 trip to Monaco, again for top marks in my TVR 350i with my friend Rob, RBD Photography Online. And it was a slow burner for sure, but now it's on 160,000 views for an hour long video. That was something to be proud of. I also made a crash compilation as well. That is my most viewed car related video on YouTube. That should really be in place with this one, but I felt this one showed more of my journey throughout YouTube rather than just a random compilation of clips that doesn't really feature myself. Oh. But it was difficult over lockdown for myself because people had time to watch videos which was great but there were no videos for me to film because we weren't allowed to meet up in groups, we weren't allowed to do car shows which is my bread and butter. I could do a bit of car spotting but by then car spotting had kind of died a little bit. I didn't really go to London anymore. So with another friend of mine known as Munch907 Online we came up with a plan and that was the drive-by car show. So what I would do is I'd tell my audience where I'd be situated with a camera and if they want to be in my video they can just drive past because at that point we weren't allowed to go for drives. So I would just stand on a roundabout and film cars driving past. I'd start at the Shepherd and Flock roundabout near Farnham, that was where I did my first four and then the locals started getting a little bit upset about all the attention so I moved it to the Denby's Wine Estate roundabout and that lasted two goes and then after that I thought I'd push the boundaries and go up north towards Alderley Edge and I found a roundabout and that's the next video Tuna Car Takeover Drive By Car Show shuts down the north so here I am miles away from home not knowing how many people would turn up oh but someone that did turn up was the police um, not in the traditional sense but um, I stayed around GT6 Ollie's house who's in that kind of area and they got word of what was happening. They obviously got told, oh, there's a car show happening on a roundabout, so they didn't understand. So they knew I was the organiser, so they looked me up online, saw the number plate of my 350Z, and then found and tracked that number plate and its journey around the area, and saw that I'd driven into Ollie's estate, and then the morning of the show, found my 350Z outside Ollie's house, knocked on Ollie's door, asking for me. So I was in a friend's house, miles away from home, and the police knew I was there, knocked on the door, asked for me. All they wanted to know, as I said in the video, was just what was going on. And just to let me know that there will be a police presence. And they let it go ahead. And it was one of the most fantastic events. It's a 25 minute video, but it's on 300,000 views. And hundreds of people attended the event, whether they be spectators or driving. And that was probably one of the most proud moments of my career knowing that I could go so far away from where I normally frequent and create that kind of stir. Eventually I would slow down a bit with my drive-by car shows because events would clash with them so if I did host another one most people would be at an event on a weekend so it wouldn't get the turnout that it did back then. That's partially why I haven't done another one but I've done a few semi ones here and there. But something else I did do instead was I hosted my own car show and that was Adam Seafest 2022 and before I go through the video with you I'd just like to mention that this year we're bringing it back again. Adam Seafest will be back on the 1st of May which is a bank holiday once again and we're going to be bigger and better. I'll bring my Toyota Chaser. I want to see as many of you wearing these t-shirts as possible which are available links down below as well but there's show car tickets, spectator tickets, there's room for traders, there's room for sponsors. It's going to be mega and this was the video that I filmed from last year's Adam Seafest. Obviously starting off with some musical numbers. If ever I put music in a video you know it's going to be a good one because I've decided to put an effort into my editing because most of my videos are quite basically edited but here we are with the Cobra and the MG 
with to the point transports delivering them there i'm going to do my best to try and bring all four cars there but the chaser will definitely be there this year now one of the most commented parts of this video was when i was walking around because i spent the whole morning literally until like two o'clock talking to people meeting people there were queues of people wanting to talk to me so i had to make sure that everyone who wanted to talk to me had the time to do so and it was only until the afternoon that i had time to run around and actually film anything i hadn't filmed anything just an intro up until that point so I had like a half hour gap until I was due on stage to film the whole show so I had to run around almost charge and a lot of fans were behind me following me I was like the Pied Piper and a few people in the comments were annoyed at that but what's wrong with that they're passionate about what I do as much as I am they want to be in the video they want to see what it's like behind the scenes and how I film a video and that's what happened that was one of the most <laughs> prominent highlights of that half hour video it's got 160 66,000 views, very good for a, a lengthy video, and I hope to film an even better video for this year's event, which will be better, it will be bigger, and it will be at the same location, Wilson Mill Casting, just up the M1. So that was definitely the highlight of the year, Adam Seafest, and it will be the highlight of this year too. But what I also got up to towards the tail end of last year, popped down to Rufford Ford, didn't I? Here's the, uh, the first video that I filmed at the Ford. Basically, I saw online all of the videos, all the TikToks, YouTubes, and Instagram reels from the Ford, and I recognized there was an opportunity to film the same kind of content, but with my spin on the video. So I added my commentary to the video, and I just wanted to see what it was like for myself. A few comments were like, oh, you're jumping on the bandwagon, but no, I wasn't jumping on a bandwagon. I was just enjoying what everyone else is enjoying much like people enjoy the videos but this was the first one and then uh, oh yeah skip to the r32 there we go towards the end of this first part r32 golf went through a little bit too quickly not too bad but it was a little bit deeper than it has been and yeah it, it killed the car i mean that video got 470,000 views, the next video got like 500,000 views, the next video I think is on 1.2 million views, then the next one was like on 500,000 views as well. So people like to see Rufford Ford videos and I do have one more video from that Ford still to come, a video that I filmed before it closed because it now is closed and that will be on YouTube soon, maybe even this week. But finally we have video number 15 where it is all led to which is named My Biggest Gift to to myself ever new car day of course i bought my toyota chaser everyone loves a white chaser and here i am introducing my toyota chaser to you i did film a behind the scenes video of how we wrapped the car in christmas paper it only took like two hours to do and there's chloe dressed up as mrs santa clausmas um, with the keys of the car and also i had to get this scene right of me unwrapping the chaser so it was just one take otherwise i'd have to spend another two hours wrapping it we had a few more spare rolls that I used around Christmas. I've still got a whole roll left even after Christmas but uh, I filmed this all in one take and luckily everyone loves a white chaser. Hoodies and t-shirts available was the uh, introduction to my chaser. So I will be modifying that car very very soon. I'm just planning it and getting sponsorships together to help out so it's going to be the best build that I can possibly make it into so that I can show you that car at Adam Seafest on the 1st of May. So a huge thanks to all 610,000 of you that are subscribed to me on YouTube and follow me on other social platforms too. Throughout my 15 years people always ask me for tips of how to do this and I always say it's passion and consistency. If you're passionate about what you do, then you can be consistent. And to be consistent is another vital part of the game. And it is a bit of a game, and I thoroughly enjoy it. If I didn't enjoy doing what I do, I would not do it. I love editing the videos, I do all the editing myself. That's why they're not the best. But here is to the next 15 years. I look forward to seeing you all at Adam Seafest. Tickets and links and everything are in the description as normal. But I hope you enjoyed this video to celebrate 15 years of my channel. But for now, thanks for watching.